Hello, and welcome back to the Gotti Video Podcast. This is a space where we host conversations with different architects, designers, and industry thought leaders to help educate you and your work. My name is Joe Gotti, and I'm the COO and Director of Design here at Gotti Furniture. For today's episode of the podcast, I have the opportunity to talk to John Groves, Senior Interior Designer with AECOM, one of the most trusted infrastructure com- uh, consulting firms partnering with their clients to solve complex challenges in a variety of industries. John has decades of uh, design experience in the industry to share with us today. John, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you here today. Thank you. How are things going? Um, busy. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. It's been um, kind of since covid stop has just kind of gone away a little bit i guess sort of yeah. um things are definitely picking back up um i was actually just in boston and in one of the terminals and it was unbelievable how many people were around yeah um, traveling so yeah there yeah. definitely is a summer surge i had to go yeah. to denver for a conference and left on like a saturday wasn't like really thinking about it like oh yeah it's summer vacation everybody's traveling it was yeah i got out of hair it was busy it was yeah well i appreciate you making the time today um usually we just like to start off get a little uh background information on you kind of like how you got into the industry and how you got where you are today okay um went to interior design school early uh, late 80s to early 90s Got my bachelor's degree, started working in retail, um, mm. and then proceeded to work for several different uh, architect- architectural offices and that did interiors and architecture. Uh, I have my fair share of sort of architecture projects as well. Mm. Um, so I worked for a couple of companies that did more retail and um, kind of general office buildings and stuff mm-hmm. like that, full buildings, and moved on from there and, and worked for a company that did uh, uh, some bank work. Uh, okay. We did freestanding branch banks too. So got a little bit more architecture there as well cool. as interior design. Um, and did larger, you know, anywhere between a thousand square feet and like a million square feet projects in my past Mm -hmm. um, until I landed at uh, AECOM. So I started in AECOM uh, 2009. Okay. I just got laid off from another job. And one of my friends that I worked with at that firm, at Mm -hmm. prior firm, uh, went to AECOM. He called me up a couple of months before I got hired. He's like, Hey, do you want to come over? And, just happened to, uh, you know, it's like the beginning of 2009. I was like, yeah, you know, I think I was stopping by your office today. And um, the manager there is like, yeah, I just left a message to uh, have you come in when you're available. And I'm like, I'm free now. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, that was 2009. I haven't been with uh, AECOM since. And pretty much from the get go, I uh, started working on airport projects for, oh, for okay. Logan. And then we did, uh, they also did Hyannis Airport. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, just kind of stuck with the, the transportation sort of stuff. Um, did a couple other minor projects too with the, with AECOM, but mm-hmm. um, one of the ones was a corporate office for uh, eBay PayPal in Boston. Okay. Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, but for the most part, it's been transportation a lot of and really concentrating on um airport work now for the past i would say 12 years okay Um, so you're you are you pretty much then focused on airports then right now yeah pretty much yeah because kind of the the amount of projects i've done now um any airport project that has some sort of interiors Mm -hmm. uh, they, they put my name on um to help out and you know almost uh two years ago i moved to to florida so right after i moved here we got a a tampa project and Mm -hmm. we got a couple other projects down Mm -hmm. here but i'm also still working with the the boston group 
mm-hmm. uh, travel up there every once in a while when when needed for those for the for the Logan projects. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, worked on you know Terminal B for United, uh, Terminal B for American Airlines, uh, a little bit of Terminal A stuff um, that's kind of come and gone, and then. Uh, the terminal E, the little E, where we added gates 10, 11, and 12. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of a progression from there. We just kind of our projects with, with Logan got uh, um, kind of bigger as we went. So with all that history and all those projects, you know, it puts me yeah. in good standing to do any of the any projects. So like yeah. I said, we working in Tampa. Um, we got some work in uh, Connecticut, mm-hmm. um, some work in Seattle. We tried going after some stuff with a contractor out in San Francisco. So mm-hmm. um, just kind of all over the country, wherever they need my uh, my expertise and my support. Yeah. So what's it like working at like a large kind of uh, like infrastructure company like AECOM? Where you know you're doing, they're he come does a lot of stuff. Yeah, they do. Yeah, we definitely do. We have um, offices all over the globe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so far it's been you know 12 years, 14, 14 years now, 12, 13 years, whatever I've been oh, wow. since yeah. 2009. Um, uh, it's it's been good. You know, it's it changes the culture changes a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, over, over that period of time. Sure. Uh, but overall it's been, it's been really great. It's, and I kind of, kind of stumbled into the transportation and the airport mm-hmm. work. And I actually really enjoy doing it. Um, yeah. The projects are longer. You don't, yeah. you know, sometimes, yeah, it takes quite a bit to, uh, to get the projects done because there's so much mm-hmm. um, going on. Uh, for those projects Mm -hmm. Um, but it's great to see you know at the at the end of the day people really utilizing and enjoying the spaces that that they're in Um, creating a a space as you probably know by from traveling that airports have changed over time yeah Um, yeah so we're kind of at the forefront of making those changes mm-hmm. making them more like your living room you know yeah. more like feeling making people feel comfortable and um and going to the airport and taking that stress away from uh travel because you know it's always stressful to travel right yeah so i was gonna say you know you you know in the kind of uh decade plus experience you've been working in the transportation with the airports what yeah. do you think have been some of the biggest changes you've noticed kind of in that, in that industry there? Um, definitely technology. And, um, and also what I just spoke about, but mm-hmm. making the spaces uh, feel more like home and feel more comfortable for uh, the passengers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, trying to give every single passenger the opportunity to, uh, wind down or plug in if they're if it's for work. Um, different sort of seating styles and seating groups. You know, when you used to go to the airport, it's just rows and rows of seats. Yeah. That's right, right. You sit there and you mm-hmm. just kind of wait for your plane. Um, now we have we have rows, but there's also you know different seat, seating styles that we're trying to mix in. Yeah. more lounge furniture to make people more comfortable regular seating to uh to get the capacity in there for you know the size of the planes um uh, we also have work bars and with stools for people yeah. that want to plug in a laptop and get work done before they get on the plane um, yeah so a different style seating uh groups where people can sit together or individual seats where people can just kind of stay, you know, get in their own zone and just kind of veg out. And like I said, the technology pretty much um, we try to design now with 
every seat has an availability to plug in your your phone, your iPad, your laptop to charge yeah. and, and get powered up before you get on your, you know, maybe 45 minute flight, maybe six hour flight. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um so it's just, you know, that's that's one of the major things that, you know, 10, 12, you know, long ago that was a necessity, right? Everybody yeah. wasn't everybody wasn't carrying around a personal computer in no. their pocket. I think it's it's definitely been hard, you know, when we work on a lot of like projects, you know, the infrastructure, I think even 10, 15 years ago, I mean, 10, 15 years in a building late life is not very long. No. And it's like it was I think it was hard for people to anticipate like so much power need, you know, yeah, not that far out. So how do you, you know, I guess, how are you trying to accommodate that, um, you know, when you're thinking about a space? Yeah, it's. We, we need to make sure that we provide all the necessities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's more and more IT closets. There's more and more mm -hmm. spaces needed, infrastructure spaces needed. But, we you know, we make sure that those, um, the quote-unquote, back-of-house spaces are, yeah. are provided to definitely uh, provide that infrastructure for, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all passenger and customer uh, yeah. experience and and what they get out of their uh, their travel so yeah like nowadays is um really wi-fi systems you mm. know that's part of it mm -hmm. uh, also giving you know depending on how long you're at the at the airport giving customers the opportunity to um find out about something new you know we've been tasked to create um some sort of content um, mm. for pretty much every project we we've, we've worked on um, to take their mind people's minds off of uh, travel for a minute if they're you know while they're waiting for the plane I think for one of the more recent ones um, Terminal B mm -hmm. uh, American Airlines it was all sports themed so we have. Mm -hmm focused opportunities um, to, to allow people to read something if they're sitting at a work bar about, uh, about the Boston sports. Mm -hmm. We have displays. We have also creating um, sort of that Instagram or Twitter mm -hmm. sort of thing. We had sort of life-size mascots that you could mm -hmm. take a selfie with, oh, that sort of thing. And interactive stuff to, you know, to create a more holistic and, and, and better passenger experience. Yeah. You know, you know the, you, you wouldn't think this would be a big thing, but restrooms nowadays in, mm -hmm. in airports, mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge, well, it's a necessity, but it's the, the, the technology has come so far that, you know, they have, um, services that show like what's available but mm -hmm. even that the the restrooms that we're designing are are like day spas you know it's yeah. every, everything needs to be really clean and, mm -hmm. and, and neat and having all these separate amenities um just within the restroom and then not only just the restrooms but companion care and, mm -hmm. and now we're doing mother's rooms yeah um, yeah and all these other spaces to provide the customer with all the needs that they might have and, yeah. and want. Um, it's interesting you bring that up. Like I was at the AAAE show in Denver earlier this month, and I would say half the talks I went into was like something about restrooms, restroom renovation, restroom infrastructure, restroom. Yeah. Like you're, I think that's like really interesting because, you know, we're in the furniture world and, you know, we put a lot of pride in the customer experience with the furniture side. I think yeah. people forget about the restrooms and it's a I, major I hate to say it, but it, it has a way bigger impact than probably yeah. anything else. Like there's nothing worse than like getting off a plane and going into a bad restroom, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a major amenity that, you know, all airports uh, require. I mean, it's a code yeah. thing. So, you know, the idea is that that's because it's a major amenity, it's got to look really good. And it's got to um, work well. Yeah. And, and, you know, so unlike some of the old restrooms where, you know, it wasn't very attractive, it didn't feel good, yeah. you know, 
the space to get in and out of it. You always like, you know, yeah. trying to jam past people. Yeah. They're very roomy and bright. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everything's touch free now. Mm-hmm. Also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was interesting. I didn't realize like how, I mean, I guess, because I should have like how much, how many accommodations need to be made. I think we're more aware and sensitive of like the differences between everybody and like what we yeah. need. So it's like, you need, you know, ADA access, but then you need child changing tables, yep. which I'm experiencing as a newer parent, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> two kids traveling. They're finally out of diapers, which is, which is great. Yeah. Uh, makes it easier. But, but then adult changing tables, which I hadn't heard of until, yeah. you know, this last guy was like, okay, well there, there's another thing. Yeah. It's, it's definitely gotten to you, to your point, like, you know, making it inviting and accommodating, but doing that is like, you know, to make it accommodating, you have to have that much more into it as well. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So beyond restrooms, where do you think is like another kind of um, impact, like large impact point um, from that kind of customer experience, kind of comfort? Um, I would say the, the area that we're now calling recomposure um, Mm. right after going through the checkpoint. Right. Okay. The yeah. TSA now requires people to take off their belt, take off their shoes, take out their laptop, um, all these things that need to happen as you go through checkpoint. But a lot, you know, a lot of the older airports you come through and they might provide you one or a couple benches mm-hmm. to like put your shoes back on. Mm-hmm. Usually not enough space for everybody. Yep. Because, you know, there's so many people going through each security yeah. checkpoint. So in the last several projects, we've provided a zone mm-hmm. just past um, the checkpoint that we, we've been calling recomposure mm-hmm. to offer the seating for the people that only need to put their shoes back on and go. Mm-hmm. Offer a kind of a peel away portion of seating for mm-hmm. a family or or someone that needs more time to put their stuff back in their bag, put their shoes on, put their belt on, collect their thoughts. Also technology, um, providing, uh, FIDs and information about where your flight is and what Mm -hmm. gate you're at, uh, Mm -hmm. within that same area. That way Mm -hmm. you can, you know, not only put your shoes back on, but also find out exactly where you're going. I like that word recomposure area. Recomposure. Yeah. Yeah, especially recompose yourself yes you know, after you've been partially especially traveling with with two kids coming through <laughs> traveling with kids sister. yeah yeah <laughs> put that down no put picking that up yeah <laughs> that area <laughs> yeah they have yeah right you have to take them out of their stroller um yeah. put that through the machine so you uh take all your bags that were on the stroller put them back on the stroller put the kids back in the stroller so yeah we've yeah, the last few projects we've tried to create it, create an area that mm-hmm. you know the people that don't need too much time they can come and sit down, uh, yeah. but giving enough space to then have kind of this area where it encompasses where mm-hmm. people can go into this zone mm-hmm. and sit around and not mm-hmm. be like in the middle of the the space where people are trying to rush through. Yeah, how do you deal with like the TSA like boxes of stuff and 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 that like because I think what you're saying makes sense. Yeah, you got the type of people probably like me when I'm not with my family. It's like I'm TSA pre-check. I just got to put some stuff in my pocket or whatever. Maybe yeah, put a belt back on versus like you know, you know, sometimes when I'm with the kids, I got like three things of something, whatever the heck they're carrying. Yeah. Like, what do you how do you handle like that side of it? Uh well, we try to create that space so you have um sort of the the bench that's in sort of the path of travel that mm-hmm. you, all you need to do is put your shoes back on put your phone yeah. in your pocket or something uh where it's just a stop and go mm-hmm. that gets you on your way uh but like i said we're trying to create a little bit more space and area where people can go into an yeah. area that's kind of off the beaten path mm-hmm. if you want to say it that way that yeah that they can put all their bags and their stroller and their kids and, and yeah, not be yeah. in the way of those other people that want to kind of rush mm-hmm. through and get to their, to their gate. That's at least, that's what we've been trying to do for, for 
all the projects in uh, more recent years. Like the the Tampa project that we're working on is really about the checkpoints. So mm-hmm. expanding two checkpoints for two of their terminals and we're providing this recomposure area. Um, they have a little bit, we have a little bit less space in these because the, the checkpoint expansion than we would have liked. Um, but there are, there are certainly the paths mm-hmm. where if you need to go, there's benches that are close to the direct connection to the concourse. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you want to pull aside, there's definitely benches that are further away from that direct connection mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. You, know, you can kind of move over to the side and, um, you know, collect uh, more of your thoughts and all your belongings and your kids and yeah and do that, that so so um, are you finding you're able are you you're trying to do this more with like a, like a bench touchdown type seat and then trying to control like flow of people or are you trying to use different variety of product in there to elicit behavior uh, depends on the project um the tampa one we are just using benches but benches in a configuration that allows okay. the ones that are close to the concourse mm-hmm. for people to touch and go and the ones that are further away from that concourse connection um you know and the one of the projects we recently did um the terminal b uh american airlines mm-hmm. that was a custom built piece oh, it wow. not only provides seating it provides those FIDs for flight information. Mm-hmm. Um, there's seating on two sides or almost all three, all four sides, if you mm-hmm. want to call it. That is a, what we call the boomerang. So as you came out of the checkpoint, the lanes fit, uh, fed into this boomerang shape. Mm-hmm. piece that also directed the flow of traffic, but there were benches on the side closer to the checkpoint. Uh, but as you travel around into the kind of the, the, I guess, bay of the boomerang shape, right, inside the V, mm-hmm. um, there are more benches on that side. We, if you went around to that, you could kind of be out of the way of the, the flow mm-hmm. of traffic. Uh, so in some cases, it's furniture. In some cases, a custom piece. Yeah. Um, I think, what was the other one? United Airlines uh, Terminal B. The United side. That was just a collection of benches um, that we did there. That was a little bit before this whole recomposure term mm-hmm. came up. Uh, one of the projects we tried going after for um, in San Francisco, it was really creating um, an ebb and flow of of passengers, where mm-hmm. uh, the people that wanted to go quickly could go around this this element and be on the outskirts closer to um, the, the flow of traffic. And then it had kind of an internal area where you could go into this, this pod and kind of sit and collect your, and then enter, you know, enter one side and exit the other side sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So those are the recomposure spaces that uh, make more sense to, you know, to have these two sort of groups of, uh, opportunities for different different travelers um also one of the the seattle project that we did Mm -hmm. too that had that sort of flow um where you could go off to the side be out of the path of travel or and then there's benches kind of in the path of travel for those those people Mm -hmm. touch and go it's really interesting. You know, it's kind of like one of those like points in the airport. I think a lot of people would just gloss over. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like the bathroom, you know, but everybody uses it's, it. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> uses it. It's probably like, it's probably yeah. way more high impact than anybody really realizes. Cause you're right. You're coming off that, like can be stressful experience of like going through the TSA through security, yeah. you know, yeah. depending on what that is, whether you have to like, just take the belt off or you got to like take everything out of the bag and do all of it. Um, Yeah. 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 That's very interesting. And it it makes, it it makes a lot of sense because I think the other topic that I probably like, and a lot of the talks I went to at the AAAE was, you know, you heard a lot about bathrooms and then it was a lot about customer experience. And I think that's been one, I think benefit of the pandemic is, you know, you're starting, I think people are, you know, realizing more about what can be done from 
architecture, interior, whatever standpoint of like to, to boost that customer experience. Yeah. That's something you're really getting. Are you really, are you seeing that more as a request and a demand from your kind of clients on the customer experience side? Absolutely. You know, it's all about the customer experience, Mm -hmm. about making their kickstart to their vacation or um, work trip or whatever as comfortable and as um, easy as possible. Mm-hmm. as stress-free as possible i mean everybody gets stressed over travel the tsa doesn't help that <laughs> uh going through security i'm sure yeah. you know yelling at you to take all your shoes off but you know our designs are trying to limit the stress to that mm-hmm. <laughs> potentially hopefully that one yeah the one small piece that you have to go through uh between coming in the front door and you know entering the jet bridge onto your plane. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, it's about the customer experience and, mm-hmm. and about uh, customer amenities, you mm-hmm. know, having nicer facilities, nicer seating, yep. um, all these things that help their their path mm-hmm. uh, from point A to point B. So in the seating realm, because um, you kind of mentioned earlier, you know, using like a variety, you know, that's we've noticed that's a trend on our side because we, yeah. we don't do beam seat we do a lot of lounge seat um so we've been doing more and more airports with lounge seating when you're working on a project is there kind of like it may be hard to say is there like a ratio or something you're trying to balance out like so much bean seat with so much lounge seat with so much dining seat or high table seat or something is you found like yeah. a good formula yeah, or something in there that you're... there's i don't know if there's really a formula yeah. the idea is that we want to have equal opportunity at every gate. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the idea would be to, um, I mean, there is a formula that starts the seating um, arrangement and seating counts. It's based on plane sizes and fleet mix and um, yeah. how, you know, what, what's, what planes are going to be there, mm-hmm. like the largest size. So, of course, we always have to base it on a larger size yeah. um, plane. You know, if plane X holds 500 passengers and that's, you know, and we have three gates and all three gates have 500 passengers, there's then a percentage, um, a formula that we use to get the seating count as close as we can, Mm -hmm. Um, which is, I think it was, it's either 75, 85 or 95% seated and then there's some other percentages uh that come to play that you know you're always gonna have some people that are standing Mm -hmm. or walking around also people that go um for the concessions and go to Mm -hmm. the restaurants so that's also a percentage that we account for that Mm -hmm. there's a certain percentage of people that are still walking the concourse certain percentage of people that are, that are sitting in restaurants so they don't need a seat in the whole mm-hmm. room um so once we narrow the that seat count down to the whole room then you know instead of just throwing rows and rows of flyaways or rows yep. and rows of just you know standard seats we start with that but then we start taking chunks away um knowing that that seat count exceeded so once we take those chunks away, we know that lounge seat, you know, the seats take a little bit more space, less sure. seating. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so the idea is to give each gate sort of an, op- an opportunity to have a special seating lounge zone, mm-hmm. uh, bench style seating. Maybe it's a, a seat with a high back on it where someone can yeah. you know, kind of go into their own element. Work bars too. Mm-hmm. It's not a, Work bars are not always a one for one, but um, we try to get there. So if you have a bank of, say, 10 flyaway seats, uh, usually a 13 foot work bar um, houses five and five, five uh, stools on either side. Yeah. So it's, it's usually about the same length as what you would get from a, a mm-hmm. five seater back to back. So that's when we start. You know, taking flyaways away from that rows and rows and mm-hmm. going, well, we could interject a, a bar here, interject a bar here, 
interject yeah. some lounge seating, you know, maybe widen up that space, mm-hmm. take two rows of seats out and create a, an area, a special area of mm-hmm. uh, seating. That way it's not uh, monotonous, like, you know, row after row after row. It's, there's more variation and uh, more opportunities to give people different seating styles and um, areas to sit in. Yeah, definitely. No, that's that makes a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, I know it's always hard. People ask me lots of times. They're like, "Well, what do you what do you suggest?" Or like, "What's the percentage of this?" And it's kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's a lot to unpack. Yeah, there's no there's no set formula for how many regular seats should we yeah. have yeah. versus how many lounge seats. Um, it seems like the trend is going to more and more lounge seats, but. The regular seats are a necessity because yep. of the capacity numbers. Mm-hmm. So you can't just go all lounge seats for no. for a giant hold room because you would never have there would be more people standing. Yeah. Um, so it's got to be that that kind of equal balance to give mm-hmm. um, enough space to enough seating variations um, f- for all those you know those different types of seating, but also. You know, we got always got to hit our hit our numbers too. That makes sense. <laughs> that make, does make sense. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the hard part. You have like you know an idealistic world. You can do one thing, but then there's a lot of realities. Like yeah. there has to be a seat count because we do a lot of talk talking about like, well, if you know if you if you spread the seats out just a little bit more, you'll get everybody to sit down. So I always make the argument like, maybe you lose twenty seats, but everybody will use the seat. Mm-hmm. But there's still the reality of like you have to have the seat count. Like sometimes yeah. we deal with this with law libraries, like their seat count affects their ranking. So it's like you have to like you know, it's reality you have to deal with. So it's like yeah. well, it doesn't count. They're not counting whether it's used or not. They're just counting whether it exists or not. So it's, it makes it it makes it a challenge for sure. Yeah, we have we have seen that um, uh, more recent projects have put in more concession spaces. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, it's a growing trend that you know restaurants and bars yeah. and you know duty free if it's international mm-hmm. or um, the Hudson News is the Dunkin' Donuts of the world. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, need, you need your your water, your gum, your candy, yeah. uh, your coffee, Starbucks. Mm-hmm. You know all these different. Uh, it, it's it's become more and more um, shopping oriented mm-hmm. in some of these uh, spaces which again that's just another amenity amenity to allow people to feel comfortable and yeah. uh, and not be uh, stressed about their 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 trip yeah i think retail is probably like one of the one of the only areas that's growing is in the airport yeah, yeah. It's, there's been a you know i think and i think obviously that was a trend pre-pandemic and probably can, will continue to grow post-pandemic is like the dwell time the dwell time has gone up and up and up, you know, yeah. with security challenges. Like if you're somebody like me, who's like, I'm not a stressful traveler, but like, I like to know that I'm not going to miss my plane by a large buffer. Yes. And luckily my wife is a very patient woman. <laughs> yeah, give you a good example. I was just in, in Boston um, last week and I flew, I flew up on Monday afternoon. Um, gave myself plenty of time. I usually give myself two hours, knowing mm-hmm. depending on, you know, security is the, the wild card, right? You could have a giant line of security any time mm-hmm. of day. Yeah. Um, or or not. Uh, but then coming home, same thing. Um, a friend dropped me off at the airport. My flight was at, I think, four. So I got there at two. Mm. Um went through security it wasn't actually that bad that day um the line was not horrible at that time of day on a saturday um i got through got found my gate and so i was probably to my gate after i went and got some some food because i had plenty of time by the time i got through security it was only like 2 30 mm-hmm. i was like okay they're not going to start boarding for about an hour and a half um or about an hour. So I was like, I have plenty of time to go get something to eat and then head over to the gate. I got over there, sat down and, Oh, this flight's delayed. So 
<laughs> I had another 45 minutes to kill. So yeah. Yes. And that seems yeah. to be the more common theme these days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so so having more amenities uh, in yeah. some of the projects we do and the content driven stuff, it gives the passenger the opportunity to walk around and mm-hmm. you know see that sports team thing or, mm-hmm. or whatever it is. At Terminal C, um, the I think one of our competitors just did uh, they did a um, music based mm-hmm. sort of theme. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool. You can go over there and. Yeah. read up on different things they have some tv screens that show some mm-hmm. videos and that sort of stuff so if you have a little bit more time to kill because your flight's delayed then you know it's not as not so bad yeah no that makes sense i mean it's hard you know uh i'm also a general aviation pilot too so i have at least an appreciation understanding it's like you know when you're traveling by air there's only so many things you can control and then yeah. a lot of it's out of there and so i think while, you know, in an era of like where we get to control a lot of things, it's stressful not being able to control like such a big event like air travel. Yeah. Um, but to your point, like, yeah, having those the amenities, furniture, you know, retailers or whatever to try to like reduce that and make it like, yeah. oh, my flight's delayed. I can go do this or I can go do that. You know, it's not yes. like you're you're stuck like you know, I remember traveling back in the 90s, like you get a snow delay, you're just staring at the wall. The yeah, I'm in the airport. Yeah, there's no such thing as uh, this. Yeah, computer exactly. on your pocket. So yeah, you just sat there and waited. Yeah, and there was not much retail, right? Oh, um, if any. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So nowadays, you know, you can sit on your phone. Yeah. You charge. You can work at the work bars or yeah, you know, plug in, go in a corner. Where there's some nice lounge seating, take a nap. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> exactly. Go get some food, do a little shopping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a make whole it, day event. Make exactly make it a pleasurable experience. Yeah. Well, this is uh, it added, uh, some really interesting insights in here. I appreciate you sharing the stuff about the the composure area. Like we, I hadn't really uh, heard people talk about that, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, just as a wrapping up here, is there I guess I'd love to get some words of wisdom or advice uh, <laughs> from you for, for future airport designers. Um, keep pushing the boundaries, mm-hmm. I guess. Keep, we, you know, we're, we're still, you know, working on um, bettering every project we do. Mm-hmm. Um, giving the, it's, it's all about customer experience. Um, at the end of the day, it's really about that passenger, that customer to start off their business trip, their work, you know, their, um, their vacation, whatever they're doing and, um, to start off at start, start it off. Well, um, yeah. giving them the opportunity to, um, you know, shop and, and find different seating locations, arrangements, uh, just pushing the boundaries and making make making each pre- uh, project better mm-hmm. as, as we uh, go to the future, taking the stress out of travel. <laughs> Those are good uh, good words to live by for sure. Yeah, so like like it wasn't for me, you know, you know I was traveling by myself, but just the prior week um, we had to go up uh, to Maine for. Uh, my dad's service and mm-hmm. you know is my whole family traveling so mm-hmm. same thing but you know different right it's four of us instead of yeah. just me so you know we took our time we didn't you know we utilized those concession spaces um it was funny on the on the sunday coming back um there was an area that we went to it was neat it wasn't right near the gate it was in the sort of a newer area that they mm. had more variations in seats so we mm. we went over there just to, to hang out because we got to the airport really early mm. um uh returning a rental car and <laughs> yeah know, the, all that stuff so so then we kind of took over a, a giant sort of seating pod of of uh 
of seats and had our luggage all there and we're all had our own little mm -hmm. seat on you know alcove to sit in and yeah yeah it sounds great well john i really appreciate the time today there's a lot of really great insights in here thank you thanks all right have a good one all right thank you <laughs>